Hey everybody, welcome back to Peachy Disc Golf. Today we are playing the back nine here at Chattahoochee Point Park to finish off a little 18 hole round using only my first 10 discs that I ever owned. All right, so if you haven't yet guys, check out our last video because we just played the front nine here at Chattahoochee Point Park using only my first 10 discs that I ever purchased when I first got started with disc golf. Right now we are four down through the front nine. As of right now, I feel like I've had some pretty disappointing drives with the drivers that I'm using. I have a Leopard, a Roadrunner, a Wraith, and a Destroyer, and none of the drivers have really impressed me as of yet, but the uh, mid ranges, especially this DX Rock and the Star Rock 3, have really been pulling their weight and really impressing me, so four down through the front nine, not bad. A lot of the holes here coming up on the back nine are significantly easier in their new pin positions. We finished hole nine with the birdie. Let's stay on the birdie train and see how we shoot. Hole 10 is 205 feet par three. Basket is straight ahead, wide open shot. It does play a little bit uphill, so it's a little bit further than 205, but we do have a bit of a headwind. So I'm gonna go with the Rock 3 here. I feel like it's probably the most dependable disc in this range. I could throw the pig maybe, but I don't know if I can get the pig there actually, but we'll go with the Rock 3. Kind of short actually. What a pitiful shot. Like this hole is only 205 feet. We're like 15 feet short. Man, that was just embarrassing. Gotta make this. Oh, off to the right again. Oh, that was so lucky, geez. Man, I keep pulling this putter to the right. All right, we just scraped by with the birdie there on hole 10. Hole 11 is also 205 feet. It's a par three. Basket is straight ahead in between two grooves of trees. Plays a little downhill as well. Should be able to get there with the Mako. Okay, I think that's like 10 foot. Man, I left it short again. What is wrong with me? My uh, form feels all out of whack right now. Headwind putt too. Ugh. Still on the birdie train at least, but something's up with my form. It's gonna come back to bite me, I think, on these longer holes coming up. Hole 12 is 385 feet par four. Basket is way past this first little grove of trees. I'm gonna be going with the destroyer here on this hole. My main play is to go down this big wide right gap here and I want something to fade hard to the left into the, uh, the opening there. We do have a little bit of a headwind so that's the main reason why I wanted to go with the destroyer. I know that this is gonna go left. That's perfect, right where I wanted it. All right, the destroyer got down here really solid, actually. Let's uh, get it close with the Penrose here. Nice, I think I'm five feet away there. Okay, finally a nice easy birdie. Hole 13, the sign says 270 par three, but I actually don't believe that. I actually think the pin on the right is a little bit further, so this one I'm guessing is closer to the 250 mark. We're gonna be going with the Rock 3 here. This will be a good test. If I can get this disc close to the basket, there's a strong chance that a Rock 3 makes it back into my bag. Maybe after this throw, we'll pull out the Matrix as well and, and do a quick little comparison. Huh, well, that was a little bit flippier than I expected. There's a bit of a headwind here, so I do have a Champion Rock 3 with me as well, and I have my Matrix also. Let's do a quick little comparison with them, just to see. I feel like the Matrix will actually be able to stand up to this headwind pretty well. What about the Champion Rock 3 though? The Star one just really flipped over. Ooh, that's a great throw. Yeah, a little 15 foot putt there. All right, let's try the Matrix as well. The Matrix is definitely more overstable. I don't know. That might have to stay in the bag. There are similar distances. This Rock 3 throw was so bad. I really thought I'd put Heiser on it and it looked like it flipped over, but if I just threw it flat and it flipped over, that'll be sad. The Champion Rock 3 and the Matrix, both very close, like 10 foot, 15 foot putts. 
Uh, the matrix is a little bit closer. We're just going with the pig here for an approach. Tap out a par there. Hole 14, 220 feet, par three. Basket is moved over to the left side now here a bit. We're just gonna pump the pig as hard as we can. I don't know, 220 might be pushing it for the pig, but let's see if we can get it close. That's parked, perfect. All right, nice recovery there. All right, hole 15, I've never played yet in this pin position. It's brand new, it's off to the right. Both of the normal pin positions are in this little swampy peninsula area off to the left. They moved the pin to the right here now, which is very strange. It's, you know, if I was gonna throw my rock three hard, it might flip over into the, the road. Really questionable decision, honestly. And also I think the fun part with this hole was there's this like tree, it's a bit dead right now, off on the left here, but that was always like, you know, the, the small hazard you had to go around was like hyzering around that tree. This just takes it away. Honestly, this pin position is not that exciting. I don't want to flip something into the road, which I'm going to treat as OB. So <laughs> we're going to go with the destroyer again. That way I can throw it hard off to the right and I know it'll come back and fade. If I had my matrix, I trusted a little bit more. That's probably what I would really throw off to the right here or maybe my cax or something. We're going destroyer. Let's just see what would have happened. Rock three, there is a headwind. So I'm gonna put it on hyzer, not throw it too far to the right. Yeah, that rock three definitely flips in a headwind. Not bad distance wise. Throwing a destroyer on like a 250, 260 foot hole feels like such a beginner thing to do, you know? So we're using my first 10 discs. If it works, it works, right? We're uh, a little tap in here for a birdie. Hole 16, 210 feet, par three. Basket is off to the right now. Haven't seen that in a little bit. Little narrow tunnel shot here. I'm gonna be going with the Tursus this time. We're gonna throw it just a, try to keep it flat, maybe a little bit of hyzer to a little flip up. Hopefully it doesn't turn over too much to the right. We'll see though, can we get it close? Ooh, if it misses that big tree there, it'll be good. Nice. We're short, but we'll have a putt. All right, I definitely thought this was gonna end up shorter than it was even. This is actually a pretty makeable putt here. Hole 17 is 200 feet now, par three. No longer in the close right position. Straight ahead though, we should be able to make it up there. 200 feet, we're gonna go with the Mako 3 here. Hopefully we don't have too much fade off at the end, but from the looks of things, this Mako 3 does tend to just carry nice and strict. That should be perfect. Yeah, I used to hate the Mako because I would turn it over a lot because I, I still do it even now where I'll throw an Anheuser on accident. So I'd be like, oh, why does the Mako always do that where my other discs don't? Because you know, the Mako is showing you its errors, but now that my angle control is a little bit better and I know <laughs> to keep it nice and level, Mako is money. All right, last hole, hole 18 is 455 feet, par four. Basket is now off on the right side of the fairway at the end here, wide open shot here. Just don't wanna go too far past this ditch. Some tournaments will call that OB. We're going with the Wraith, which has been kind of flippy for me. I'm gonna to try to keep it nose down. That's what I think is helping me get a little bit of turn out of it. And also try to actually give it some height this time. Also, we're gonna throw it on hyzer. So flippy. That's, <laughs> that's in bounds, I think. It's in the rough, but oh, that's <laughs> so flippy. All right, so the tournaments that I played here would say the ditch and beyond is OB, not the tall grass but I do think some tournaments probably would say tall grass is OB, but sign doesn't say anything. We're kind of, this is inbounds here. Just need to get it up close to the basket. We're going with the pig. If we can get close and with the birdie, that would be, turn up what was going to be a mediocre round into a pretty solid one. 
Too soft? Yeah. Dang. Circle two putt here, I think. I'm gonna call it a circle two here. Oh, that was sad. It was a pretty good drive, honestly, distance-wise. Really should have gotten this one. Yeah, there's a tailwind. Dropped it. Overall though, pretty fun round still. I really enjoyed coming back to some of these discs. Let me give you my final thoughts back at the pavilion. All right, I am all finished up with my little 18 hole round here at Chattahoochee Point Park. I ended up minus 11, so honestly a decent round. I think my best score here is actually 12 under. So I thought I was gonna be like well off pace after the front nine, but we picked it up here on the back nine, only two pars. We definitely scraped some birdies that should have been gimmies, but there's something off with my form. It's definitely something, I know I'm like working on trying to get my hips more involved after watching some recent YouTube videos. I'm sure if, you've, uh, if you're tuned into Disc Golf YouTube, you've seen like Leon's video. I don't know his last name, but he's got a, like a nice little video series on showing him how he gets his hips involved. So that's something I'm working on right now. So I think I was sort of incorporating that a little bit and it's sort of like a weird little like partially my old form, partially trying out new form stuff. So still a solid round though. And I had a lot of fun playing with these old discs. Unsurprisingly, all of them are Innova discs, except for my one Tursus from Westside. It's pretty funny. In my like two years of playing disc golf, I've sort of gone through waves of different manufacturers. I started off Innova like a lot of other new players. Then I sort of switched and dabbled into Discraft actually next. And I got a bunch of Discraft discs, almost had a full Discraft bag. And then I picked up a couple of MVP discs and I was like, these feel so nice or so nice and flat. And then MVP, I just got a lot of discs from them. Had a small little latitude and trilogy phase. And then now, as you're probably aware, going through a little bit of a prodigy phase, but it's pretty funny, just sort of working my way through these different manufacturers. But I really had a lot of fun. The discs that impressed me the most are the mid ranges still. This uh, Rock 3, I sort of understand now why on hole four and the front nine, if you, again, check that video out if you haven't, I had a really good approach with the Rock 3 and I sort of think this disc is a little bit flippier than I expect it to be in the Star Plastic. I have a Champion Rock 3 and it is definitely straight to overstable. It's more on the overstable side. It doesn't really have much turn. In a headwind though, I wouldn't really trust this Star Rock 3. It definitely flips over a good bit. Uh, it does still have a little dependable fade, but it has a good bit of turn as well. But I really enjoyed throwing the Rock 3 and I did have a couple of tests with the Champion Rock 3 as well because of that and, and my Matrix. I'm gonna be doing like a little bag battle series, I think here in the near future where I sort of put a couple of discs against each other to see like which one is gonna go into different slots. Like I do wanna compare throwing putters is one that I was thinking of actually recording today with this video, but I got pretty tired and decided not to do it. I wanna do a like overstable mid-range slot. That's one that I'm considering a super overstable fairway, nine speed like a Firebird slot, that sort of thing. So be on the lookout for that in the near future where I do a little disc comparison that way. And yeah, I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed throwing like this DX rock. I didn't get to throw on the back nine, but I had a ton of fun throwing it on the front nine. Just like a nice little flip up the flat disc, carries nice and straight for a, a decent way. And then honestly, now that my angle control is just a little bit better than when I first started playing the Mako 3, I had a lot of fun throwing it. It made me consider, you know, maybe I should uh, consider bagging a Mako 3 either instead of my hex or maybe in, along with my hex. My hex goes straight for a long way, but it does have a nice dependable fade at the end, whereas this just carries straight. So this could be a nice little angle control disc. I know, for example, Kang, he bags a Buzz and a Mako, uh, and he says like the Buzz is a little bit more overstable, whereas the Mako, he can put a little Anheuser and holds the Anheuser. I might consider doing that as well. I had a lot of fun throwing the Mako. The disc that surprised me the most, unsurprising is probably the Wraith. This disc was so flippy. I was really surprised. I know. I had thrown it a lot and it, hit, it definitely hit a lot of trees, but I would put it on hyzer, it would flip over. I feel like it's even flippier than my wave. The disc that I was the most disappointed in is gonna be the Roadrunner here, at least my copy, because this Roadrunner does not flip very much. I had recorded on hole 18 another shot using this, but my battery died just as I was throwing it. And it didn't even really flip up to flat. You saw my Wraith flip up the flat. If the Roadrunner at a nine speed, negative four turn, 
something's up with this Road Runner. I really need to get my hands on a different run and try it out just to see if it's flippier because this disc, I like the way it feels. It's got a really like shallow profile. It feels really great in the hand. And I mean, it's a nice straight disc. That's the thing is like, I, I enjoy throwing it on a nice straight shot with a nice hyzer finish, but it is not, this one at least is not understable for me. But that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know down in the comments what were like your first discs that you started off with. Do you still bag any of them or have you since replaced all of them? Because for me, none of these discs are currently in the bag. The only one that might make it now is that Rock 3, maybe. But uh, it's gonna to be a tough time getting rid of the Matrix because I really do love that disc. Uh, but yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this little video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when our next episode comes out. Until next time, guys.